In this video, we are talking about a series of tropical disturbances that could have an effect on our weather here in the state. Extreme flooding rains and major pattern changes are in store given the current outlook. Also, I have your explosive 4th of July in-depth forecast for you, and it's a doozy. All that and more coming right up. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. The weather has been really quiet for the past little bit, and when the weather gets quiet, I like to spend time with family. I just got back from a short two-day trip to the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee, where we stayed in the coolest treehouse I've ever seen. I also bought a literal SUV load of fireworks down there, which I may or may not be live streaming here on the channel. And in other news, I'm getting replaced with artificial intelligence. Well, maybe not, but the National Weather Service has introduced new supercomputers that will make forecasting even more accurate than it is right now, which isn't saying much, honestly. No, I'm, I'm kidding, obviously, but this is actually a big deal, and we're going to talk a lot more about it as we go into the future. But right now, we got a bunch of weather to analyze, so let's get right into that. All right, let's start off with the tropics down here, and as you can see, we've got a lot of activity for it being June 30th, guys. We have not one, not two, but three areas of interest here and we're going to start off talking about the one closest to the u.s up here the moisture from this tropical disturbance will be coming on to shore today around houston and areas in southeastern texas and the main concern we have with this is going to be rain it is going to rain a lot it's going to rain cats and dogs and this will lead to some flooding okay the national hurricane center does still have an outlook here for the potential for this to develop into a tropical cyclone maybe a tropical depression i very highly doubt that this will be become a tropical storm, but we got a 40% chance of a continued development of a cyclone here. Right now, it's just a bunch of moisture and it's moving up into the southeastern areas of Texas right now, so there's really not enough time left for this to continue to develop in any very significant way. Recent satellite and radar imagery indicate that showers and thunderstorms associated with an area of low pressure near the southern coast of Texas are showing limited signs of organization, so there's still a chance, just a tiny little chance. But guys, if you live down here in Texas, I think you're not even going to notice this unless you're right on the coast and even then it's just going to be a big heavy rainstorm and not it's not going to feel like a tropical storm especially as far as the winds go we're not going to see any tropical storm force or hurricane force winds down here we're just going to see a ton of rain in fact here's the forecasted rainfall from the national weather service you can see that area south of houston and south and west of galveston is going to be the hot spot with four to six inches of rain possible so if you live in a flood prone area down here take precautions now because that will cause some flooding. Now, moving right along a little bit to the south, we've got potential Tropical Cyclone 2 here, and this is the one that we talked about in the last video. There was a very slight chance that it moved up into the Gulf of Mexico. That is not going to happen. We know that for sure now. This thing's just going to go directly west over Central America and then over into the Pacific Ocean. It is very likely, however, that this will become a tropical storm before it makes landfall down here, so this is more than likely going to be Bonnie still, but it's not going to affect the lower 48 at all here. It'll be a high end tropical storm as it makes landfall around San Jose. It's going to go across the landmass there back into the Pacific and then looky here, the National Hurricane Center believes that this might actually become a category one hurricane as it goes even further off to the west. And then moving even further east, we've got another area of potential development down here moving towards the Leeward Islands. we got a two day and a five day 10% chance. It's overall, once again, very low. So really, other than the one that's getting ready to move into Texas, this is the one that we have to watch the hardest right now, but still, we're not expecting anything spectacular out of this. Nevertheless, this is a lot of activity for June, okay? And we're getting ready to get closer to the rise, getting close to the peak of hurricane season here. And over the next month to month and a half, if we continue to see this much activity, I am very concerned with uh, where this hurricane season's going, okay? So right now, there's nothing to worry about. Don't be scared. Be prepared. But yeah, be prepared. If you're over here in the Gulf Coast or even in the southeastern U.S. or Florida, now is the time. If you haven't already, revamp your hurricane preparedness program get your family together let them know what your plans are going to be whenever these cones of uncertainty are starting to point up towards the u.s okay and of course subscribe to this channel because we are going to be your number one source of that information as we go forward all right moving right along let's come up here to the lower 48 and take a look at that severe weather outlook that's right we're still not done talking about all these slight risks of severe 
of that's right we're still not done talking about all these slight risks of severe weather it seems like every daggone day we've had a slight risk here a slight risk there a slight risk everywhere and it's just continuing today we have a slight risk up here in wisconsin portions of the up of michigan all the way down into iowa and minnesota this includes rochester La Crosse, eau claire merrill all the way up to marquette the main threat today is going to be damaging winds and maybe some hail uh, the tornado threat is quite a bit low here and then skipping over to the day three outlook so this is saturday we have a slight risk of severe weather in the east coast from philadelphia up through new york bridgeport providence and boston almost 40 million people are included in this tiny little slight risk over here so uh, we'll talk about that more right now on the weather models but first let's pay some bills and thank today's sponsor my heritage the number one resource for family history research and dna testing have you ever been curious about your family's origins? I personally love this stuff. I'm, I'm obsessed with it almost. I, I have spent hours and hours looking into it. And MyHeritage is a great resource because it's used and trusted by over 90 million people. And it gives you access to over 18 billion historical documents from around the globe. So there's like this foolproof network of people and information that allows you to find stuff quick and easy. Piecing together your family tree is very simple. Just get started with a couple close family members and then you start getting recommendations. There's even specialized AI technology to restore and animate any old photos you find. Like I said, I find this stuff fascinating. I literally have spent so much time on this website and it's allowed me to see photos of my great grandfather who I never actually got to meet. And if that's not cool enough, it also has allowed me to see a photo of my great, 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 great grandfather who lived in Scotland. Scotland in 1686. I mean, what in the world? Is that not cool? In order to unlock your story, MyHeritage is offering a 14-day free trial for anyone who clicks the link in the description and heads over to the MyHeritage website. And when your free trial expires, you'll get 50% off the rest of your subscription. You heard that right. Just click the link in the description for a 14-day free trial and then half off the rest of your subscription. The mystery of your history is no more with MyHeritage. So guys, what are you waiting for? Go check it out. It's very cool and let me know what you find down in the comments all right let's get back into the video okay starting back looking at today let's look at that simulated radar on the h triple r the time and date in eastern's always going to be above my head there so let's zoom in on our slight risk area and see what's going on you can see we've got some showers maybe a couple rumbles of thunder here around 3 p.m but that's just a part of our boundary that's actually going to spark off some of those bigger storms between 5 6 and 7 p.m look here we could have some isolated cells with hail and damaging wind moving west of Eau Claire around the St. Paul region all the way up into the UP of Michigan and these are going to pack a punch with the heavy rain and some isolated very strong winds but look nothing really organized happens here this doesn't turn into a big MCS this doesn't turn into a supercell outbreak or anything and then back to the south and west a little bit where we have that marginal risk we see a lot of the same back here with just a little bit less instability a little bit less shear so these storms won't be quite as impressive in Nebraska but still something to watch out for if you're in Omaha or Lincoln or even down into northwestern portions of Kansas. And most of the action is going to follow this boundary right here as it moves off to the east, uh, especially once it hits the east coast over here where we had that day three slight risk. And in order to look at that a little bit better, let's take a look at the Euro model here. The green represents moisture, and you can see how we've got that big ridge over the east coast allowing for a lot of that moisture to come up. And we got this low pressure system up here in Canada that's trailing that boundary down, and that's what's causing our isolated scattered thunderstorms. So watch that big swirly boy up there in Canada really push down some cooler air, interact with the warmer air and then bada bing bada boom there you go and you can see this very well on the instantaneous flash rate this shows us where lightning strikes can occur friday that boundary is going to get locked up here but a lot of the moisture is still locked down here in the southeast bringing that uh, isolated chance of showers and thunderstorms from florida all the way up into tennessee and the southern portion of the appalachians but when that moisture really meets up on saturday with the boundary especially in the northeast there we are going to see some potentially big time storms there with strong damaging winds maybe some hail and a very slight chance of a nader or two but as usual in the summertime whenever we go into the nighttime period uh, things start to calm down quite a bit so these will be really driven by the daytime heat they'll come through cool everything off and then you'll have a nice evening and then as we go into sunday july 3rd we're going to see reignition of some of these storms down here in the southeast and that's 
that's when I'm planning on doing my fireworks show, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull it off or not. It does look like there's going to be a lot of moisture around, but it'll be scattered in nature. And of course, we can always wait until the 4th. Maybe that day will be better here in Kentucky. I don't know. Let's check it out with your official 4th of July forecast. Okay, editors, get some fireworks going. All right. Guys, welcome to the official Ryan Hall 4th of July forecast. This is like my second or third favorite holiday, mainly because the fireworks. I love fire. I love works. I love it all. And I know a lot of you guys do as well. So let's let's see how our 4th of July celebrations are going to go this year as far as rain goes and all that stuff. Okay, so early in the morning on Monday, July 4th, we are going to have a little bit of a disturbance up here in the upper Midwest sliding down to the south and east. We're getting that summertime slippy slide back here. But if you plan on doing any 4th of July activity, especially after 4 or 5 p.m., the southeast down here in Florida, you guys look like you're going to be dealing with a lot of those scattered pop-up showers and thunderstorms as well. Now, a lot of people are most concerned with the nighttime period and good news well, by the time we get to 8 p.m 9 p.m a lot of those summertime convection storms do start to calm down a little bit there's still going to be some strong storms maybe some heavy rain up here in the upper midwest this is the area i'm most concerned about also up here in northern montana back into the pacific northwest this is going to be more of a continuous rain deal so that's what we're dealing with there i think that the nighttime fireworks displays are going to be a-ok -okay in a lot of the eastern portion of the u.s now now, here's the problem that we have, right? In areas where we don't get the rain, we have the heat. We're talking about 90 to 100 degrees for a widespread area here, and that heat does spread over into the Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic, and southeastern portions of the U.S. as well. A lot of people are under burn bans right now, red flag warnings. Um, a lot of people are in a drought. So if you are one of those people, definitely do <laughs> don't do the fireworks displays if you can't do it somewhere where you won't potentially start a grass fire or a forest fire or something like that. But yeah, just pay attention to the National Weather Service. And also, if you're going to be outside a lot, you know, we're barbecuing, we're doing outdoor stuff, we're playing wiffle ball. I, I don't know. Drink lots of water, wear sunscreen, because it is going to be a scorcher out there for the vast majority of us. Now, if you're over here on the West Coast, it's going to be a little bit cooler than average, especially the further north and west you go. Same thing up here in Maine and northern portions of Vermont and New Hampshire, a little bit cooler for you guys as well. So there you go. That's the two big things, right? Is it going to rain and how hot's it going to be? All right. So that's pretty much all I have for you today. But here's just a little general update for the channel. I don't get to do this a lot. Just talk to you guys. First of all, I do plan on streaming my fireworks show if we don't get rained out. More than likely on Facebook. Make sure you go follow me on Facebook or it will happen right here on this channel, but as a members only thing because there's a half a million people that subscribe to this channel. And whenever they get notifications that I'm going live, the vast majority of them think that something bad is happening like a big storm or something so i don't want to go live on this channel send out a half a million notifications freak people out if you really want to see my fireworks show make sure you uh, become a member of the channel and we'll do a, a members only live stream we'll have our chat room we'll have all you know we'll have everybody here it'll be a good time i am done taking vacations for a little bit so there will be no more seven day streaks with me not posting now i'm not going to post every day if nothing's going on but i am back here in the weather room uh, for several months now completely focused on the weather and that means that her Hurricane season is going to be crazy. I'm telling you guys, we are going to have the best hurricane coverage. We're literally going to have cameras all up and down the coast, sensors everywhere. It's going to be a science mission. It's going to be a literal monumental effort what we're doing with our live streams, and I really want you guys to be a part of it. Yeah, I'm hoping for a low impact season, but if we do get a big bad boy coming up the Gulf or towards the East Coast, I'm telling you right now, we've got you covered. All right, thanks to everybody over here that's a member of the channel. You guys are the reason I get to do this, okay? I have no other responsibilities. This is my job. This is what I focus on day in, day in out and I literally couldn't do it without the, the members of the channel. Thank you guys so much. If you've ever wanted to become a member, now's the time to do it. Hit that button. I promise you won't regret it. It's not like you're going to get exclusive access to like some secret weather website or anything, but you will know that you are supporting me and the whole team. We all depend on you. So thank you so much and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.